Good afternoon. It is Thursday, October 9th, 2025. We are still watching Tropical Storm Jerry this afternoon as it marches quickly northwestward at around 18 to 20 miles per hour towards the island of Antigua and Barbuda over the next 6 to 12 hours where we have tropical storm warnings that are currently in effect for those islands. Now, when we zoom in much closer on Tropical Storm Jerry this afternoon, one could even argue it's even a tropical storm at all and even bonafide because of the fact that there's not much tropical storm force winds occurring at all on Guadeloupe, as well as if you're on Dominica and down here on Martinique, very little wind at all happening on the western side of the circulation here of Jerry, whereas on this side of the circulation, on the northeastern side, that's the fat side, we are getting very strong tropical storm force winds to near hurricane force at times at the surface, and it is all because tropical storm Jerry is dealing with almost 30 knots of vertical wind shear. And you can tell by looking at this, when you don't have any convection on the northwestern quadrant of the circulation, whereas on the southeastern quadrant, there's a lot of thunderstorms taking place. And some of these are very intense and producing a lot of lightning. And anytime these showers and thunderstorms try to wrap all the way around, they can't even attempt to do so because of this vertical wind shear that Jerry is dealing with right now. And as long as Tropical Storm Jerry has a structure like this where it's very lopsided, where the vortex is not very well defined and it is not vertically stacked, Jerry is not likely to strengthen very quickly at all over the next couple of days. And w once the vertical wind shear, if at all, begins to lighten up over the system, it will take quite a bit of some time for the vortex to become better defined and stacked for where Jerry can take better advantage at strengthening. Here's a look at the IR satellite imagery on Jerry, and you can clearly see what strong vertical wind shear will do to a system. You have more of this blobier-like convective structure and not much banding features that make this look organized by any means. And so as long again as we have this blobier convection here, the system is dealing with some sort of vertical wind shear. And this time again, it is coming in out of the northwesterly direction at around 25 to almost 30 knots. And so when we look at the deep layer water vapor imagery here on the satellite imagery, we can clearly see that again, Jerry is dealing with that vertical wind shear. And one would look at this imagery and say, how is there vertical wind shear, David? There doesn't look to be a whole lot here. There clearly is a, vert a, a quite a bit of vertical wind shear, and that's because there's an upper level low here to the north of Puerto Rico that's imparting westerly flow here. And then the thing is, there's another weak little disturbance well off to the northeast of Jerry in the upper levels of the atmosphere, not really demarcating that in the lower levels. And so what you end up seeing here is the, the flow doing kind of like this, kind of getting shunted down right into where Jerry is. And that is why we have that northwesterly shear over the system, because you got to understand Jerry is moving this direction. It is moving to the northwest and even to the west northwest at around 20 miles per hour and getting flow out of the northwesterly direction here at around 10 knots. When you combine these two storm motion, 20 knots, and on top of uh, 10 knots of upper level winds coming in out of the westerly and northwesterly direction, that equates to about a 25 to 30 knot vertical wind shear that the system is dealing with. That's basically where we're at right now. So while again, it doesn't look a whole lot of vertical wind shear here, there is a lot because of the storm motion primarily. And you can see what it has done to the storm. This is from a recent TDR mission or tail Doppler radar from NOAA, the P-3 Orion aircraft that flew through the system just a couple of hours ago and showed that there is a significant tilt with the vortex from the lower parts of the atmosphere at two kilometers all the way up to five kilometers. So you can see here is the lower level circulation and here is the mid-level circulation. So they are definitely offset from one another, all thanks to that vertical wind shear. And based on what the aircraft got, there was vertical wind shear around 19 or 20 knots, probably a little bit stronger given how blobbier the convection is. And we could actually see the circulation on the in the lower levels uh, as that races out ahead of the deep convective mass. So vertical wind shear is probably right around 25 to almost 30 knots based on the satellite presentation versus with what this got a few hours ago. And when we look at the latest P3 Orion tail Doppler radar mission that flew through this system this morning, again, with what we just showed you, but only this look at the satellite imagery, 
in respect to where their plane went through. We can see that the strongest winds again are to the right of the storm motion. So that is primarily on the northeastern side with very light loose winds here on the western side and in fact one could even argue that there is barely a closed circulation at all on this so this is a very very sharp wave envelope perhaps somewhat closed and somewhat ill-defined the pressure has come up though quite significantly almost 10 millibars within the last six hours which is pretty significant and that's what vertical wind shear will do it will tilt the vortex so we don't get sufficient convection that wraps all the way around to lower the surface pressures. And what we end up here is a weakening system. And right now it is at 1,007 millibars. Would not be surprised if the NHC um, brings that up a little higher, probably to 1,008 or 9 millibars, meaning that the system is extremely weak and very ill-defined right now. We have a new, uh, we have another Air Force mission that flew through the system and showed Again, uh, winds are very loose here. Here is a circulation here, and it looks like the plane is about to find another circulation somewhere in here. But keep in mind, winds really sharply cut off here, which means we have a vort max somewhere down here, while we also have a vort max somewhere up here, which isn't too surprising given the vertical wind shear is tilting the vortex. This being the low-level circulation at around one or two kilometers, and this being the more mid-level circulation being found at around five or six kilometers. So there is significant tilt with height here with the center displaced some um, 100 nautical miles out to the north or to the southeast. So at the moment, or actually this is about 70 or 80 miles. Sorry, I'm getting that wrong. So 16 degrees north and here is 15 degrees north somewhere down here. So this is tilted by almost 100 miles or so to the southeast, meaning that this is a very sheared system. So now the big question remains here is whether or not Tropical Storm Jerry will develop a intercourse structure to where it can re-intensify right before it gets extremely close within a few nautical miles from Antigua and Barbuda over the next 6 to 12 hours by late tonight into the very early wee morning hours of Friday. So looking at the H Wharf model here on uh, Tropical Storm Jerry and we can clearly see that this is probably more likely overestimated than what is actually being realized here but what it shows here is again very weighted tropical storm here with most of the tropical storm force winds pretty much to the northeast of the system where we have very light loose winds on the western side in fact some of these islands may not even get much wind at all maybe only 10 to 15 mile an hour winds as this actually passes just to the northeast of um, Guadalupe here, which is pretty impressive. But the winds do pick up once the back side rolls through that will come in out of the north or out of the southwesterly direction. So you get that inflow. And then on this model in 24 hours, it does show that an intercourse structure develops. That would be late tonight into the early wee morning hours of Saturday which again is extremely uncertain right now because again, the system is dealing with a lot of vertical wind shear right now. And it remains to be seen if um, any deep convection can actually wrap all the way around onto the up shear side and protect that side uh, from the vertical wind shear to when then Jerry could be able to form an inner core structure. It is going to be difficult though because of the vertical wind shear that Jerry is dealing with. And the system remains this way for the next couple of days where it does not strengthen a whole lot. In fact, probably no strengthening at all over the next say day and a half or two because of that vertical wind shear. But once it moves to the north and it recurves out to sea here, Significant strengthening with Jerry is a distinct possibility, but not very likely given with what we're seeing right now. And it is going to take some time for the inner core structure or whatever vortex that the system has to realign itself to become more conducive and favorable in an optimal position for where Jerry can take full advantage of strengthening in a very um, warm sea surface temperature regime. When we look at the HMOD model, so again, this is meaning more reality in relation to with what we saw on the H Wharf model. You can see again how uh, discombobulated uh, the system is, very elongated here, where we again have that vortex here to the northwest and where we have a another vortex. So this again is really disheveled, really not organized at all. 
And again, uh, if you are the lucky island here, again, that being Guadalupe, you may not see much wind at all while this passes to the northeast of you, but you're going to get a lot of rainfall and some flood impacts because of some of the convective-like um, structures that move through. And then this system really doesn't uh, fare very well. Over the next 36 hours by Friday afternoon, system really doesn't get its act together very much. It really struggles, and it's really... It never does. Uh, over the next 84 hours and even the next uh, four days, it really, really struggles here. So it is really important to note that even so the NHC does have this at a hurricane, those trends could come down with future forecasts from them because they're the experts, right? We got to rely on their updates very much here. And I wouldn't be surprised if that actually happens because, again, the sheer is really taking a toll on Jerry. When we look at the haves A model, uh, again, very similar, but only this is over the island, which is probably an outlier scenario given the system is generally moving off to the northwest right now. That's what we're seeing, even just slightly uh, west-northwest of due northwest. But if it does get over the islands, that would bring a lot more stronger winds. And then, of course, another circulation up here. So it there's so much uncertainty exactly where this is going to be passing over because the circulation is not well defined. So we don't know who's going to get the worst of what uh, compared to a few days ago when this would have been a bona fide hurricane otherwise. Now, looking at the Habs B, so again, something similar moving over Antigua and Barbuda by late tonight into the overnight hours of Thursday into Friday, and then pretty much moving still due northwest there, north of Puerto Rico. And then on this model, it does try to get its act together on the halves be pretty significantly, and we still end up seeing a hurricane. Before this model in particular, a huge outlier, all of the models that we have today do not show Bermuda getting anything. So again, this would be an outlier because Bermuda is right there, a little seahorse uh, little island. The system is right there, and this would be a really bad situation, but it looks very unlikely at this time. Okay, so with that being said, here's a look at the latest official forecast from the National Hurricane Center on the earliest or reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds. And you can see um, overnight tonight, pretty much over Antigua and Barbuda with a 50 to 60 percent chance of those islands seeing tropical storm like conditions. That's why the National Hurricane Center has issued tropical storm warnings for those islands. We are not expecting this to become a hurricane at all over the crossing of the islands, which is great news. But nonetheless, winds this strong will likely lead to significant um, down trees and power lines, lots of uh, flooding. You can see um, catastrophic flooding on some of the islands, perhaps due to the heavy rainfall. Now, when we take a look here at the official track two from the National Hurricane Center, you can see, uh, of course, tropical storm warnings for that island of Antigua, Barbuda, as again, this remains a tropical storm. Everywhere else on the rest of the islands here of the leewards and windwards, you have tropical storm watches that are out. And again, this track pretty much safely away from Bermuda here is very likely. And if you are uh, looking at the Haves B model, please don't believe that one. That is a huge outlier scenario, and it is way outside of the cone of uncertainty right now. But, of course, anything is a possibility, and we have to take that into consideration. But right now, most of the models keep this away from Bar uh, Bermuda over the next five days, which is good news to hear. And like I said, winds right now are at 65 miles an hour, but I would make a fair bet. When this video gets released, roughly at around, say, about 11 o'clock or noon Pacific Daylight Time, that would be about uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in Eastern Time. Winds will probably be down to about 55 or 60 miles per hour, would not be surprised, and the pressure will probably be up in around 1,005, 1,008 millibars because of the weakening that we have seen. So when watching this video, um, just let, letting you know that you see it 65 now, but that will probably come down in the next advisory from the National Hurricane Center. If not, definitely the 5 o'clock advisory. The Tropical Storm Jerry rainfall forecast is as follows. So Barbuda, even so, you may not get the worst of the winds in particular against maybe, again, of course, some Tropical Storm Force winds. Guadalupe is 
probably not going to get the worst of the winds. St. Kitts and Nevis, not the worst either, but you will also get a lot of rainfall. And we're looking at two to four inches of rain on the majority of these leeward or these windward and leeward islands over the next 24 to 36 hours with Barbuda and Antigua getting up to as much as four to six inches of rainfall. So yes, rain is going to be a big impact with this storm versus the wind in itself. Unless the system sneaks to the uh, west of these islands, then the fat side would get over these islands. And yeah, we would be talking about uh, significant wind damage as the tropical storm would migrate that way. But right now, it doesn't seem to be the case in today's update. Now, speaking of track really quickly, if this deep convection remains extremely intense, that could wobble the circulation a little bit further to the west. It could kind of tug and yank the surface low a little bit more underneath this convective cloud mass. So that is worth watching over the next several hours, whether or not will this deep convective cloud mass help to yank the system or the surface low a little bit underneath. So far, we're not seeing any, any any indications of that right now. With strongest winds here, winds sharply curve around here, and you can clearly see where we have that area of lower pressure. So very elongated this afternoon on Jerry, which is a good thing that will prevent it from consolidating anymore, and that will prevent any strengthening, at least in the short term. But anyways, if you haven't been here before and you found all of the information in this video very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving on Tropical Storm Jerry, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell notification icon if you haven't already, so you get daily tropical weather updates if necessary on the system as long as it remains a threat. Please hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon here on the 9th day of October, 2025, and signing off here as of 1.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Have a great rest of your guys' day.